What a cannon! Range fans, Range fans, we've got something special for you here today. Yes, there have been many firearms used across many movies in the film industry for a very long time. The film industry, believe it or not, as anti-gun as they can seem at some time, helped put quite a few on the map. Some, like the old model, 629 and Dirty Harry. And if Detective Callahan and the Smith & Wesson Model 29 wasn't proof enough, then comes along, this is not in sequential order, but then comes along the beautiful Laura Croft, Desert Eagle. I think we all know where that comes from, right? What a cannon! And if Lord Croft and Tomb Raider and that Desert Eagle wasn't good enough for you, then came along that Colt Python wielding. I know he had a six inch, folks. But Rick Grimes comes along in The Walking Dead. Ooh, talking about a sweet shooter. Feels like a 22 after that deagle. <laughs> and last but not least, and what we're here to talk about today, is the iconic, through many centuries, starting in 1962, in Dr. No, with Ian Fleming, in 007. One of the sexiest things outside of my lovely wife I have ever seen. The Walther. PPK and the caliber it was meant for, 32 ACP. Who can Bond be on target today? We're not gonna go through a full review. I know you're thinking, 32 ACP, they make them in 380, yes. 32 ACP, and that's what we're gonna do, is get some speeds, feeds, and ballistics in 32 ACP against the venerable. This is a three inch barrel, 3.3 inch, and we're gonna bring out a three inch revolver and 38 special, and see how it does in the clear ballistics gelatin. You gonna wanna hang in there. You just witnessed the first shots from good old 007. Yes, in 32 ACP, and I tell you why in 32 ACP, outside of being a Bond fan, of course, and I know many of you are, by the success of their films in that series, I've always wanted to fire a Walther PPK or PPKS. This happens to be a PPK, but with the PPK, it has also, because it's made here in the US, it has the beaver tail, so it avoids that slide bite that you get in some of the older models. It has these black wraparound grips on it. We'll tell you a little bit about it before we get to speeds and feeds. So these black wraparound grips, and as you saw there, it is capable of firing without the magazine, so no magazine disconnect. And as you can see there, it is a single action, double action fired pistol. Now, the double action is pretty heavy at about 12 pounds. The single action is actually not too bad at about three pounds, which is just phenomenal. The take up on the double action, very little very little take up on the double action. The trigger's actually not all that bad for this pistol. Now, you move back to the hammer, and what's pretty neat is the hammer is serrated at top for a good purchase. It also has a notch cut in between. That notch cut is cut in between so that when you're downrange, you can actually see 
the built-in cocking indicator to see if there's a round in the chamber or not, which is what the cocking indicator is for. It also has on the slide on the left side, it has a decocker. That is slick as all get out. It has the decocker, and when you decock it, it is on safe. You can't pull the trigger, you can't do anything about it. You take it off safe, you show red for danger, don't point it at anything you don't intend to destroy. You can then pull the trigger, whether in single action or double action. Now, the one thing about the new generation, first and foremost, quality, quality, quality. I've had this thing apart. I can't show you how to take it apart here on the channel. There's plenty of videos out there for it. It's no longer allowed, but really easy to feel strip. And, and taking it apart, not a machine mark anywhere. I mean, just wonderful, wonderful quality from Walther. And it comes in this hard case box that's fit the pistol down in into this felt. It's almost like a presentation box, if you will. Just really nice outfit all together. But the one kind of sticky thing for me is the rear sight. Though really nice rear sight with a red dot and front sight with a red dot. Did you just line up on the target and let them rip? It has wavy serrations in the top of the slide also but that rear, slide, rear sight is machined into the slide. You drop this thing by mistake, chip it or what have you, you're sending it back to Walther for them to charge you for a whole new slide. What that might cost, I don't know. I kind of do like the old model. It's probably a little bit of a way to take cost out, but I like the old model where the rear sight was notched. By the way, I just noticed, good gracious alive, the slide to frame fit is really tight hardly any movement there. That's a little bit about the Walther PPK made famous by Ian Fleming and James Bond in 1962-ish, 63-ish, I think it was, with the 32 ACP. But here's the real deal. Here's what we're out here for today. Why, I told you why 32 ACP, but it got me to thinking. If I took some speed fees, now we can debate this all day long, but 38 Special is a two-legged Predator Stopper. It is. I don't care what anybody out there says, the data says something different. 38 Special is capable of getting it done. Of course, you have to do your part, yada, yada, yada. But everyone always gets on about nine millimeter and 45. And I'm gonna tell you, I lean to the 45 side. I'm not embarrassed by it. But who wants to see another nine millimeter 45 test? Not me. I'm gonna stick with the 45 anyways. But 32 ACP and 38 Special became interesting to me, not only because of 007, but it became interesting because everybody says in that nine millimeter to 45 debate that, hey, the um, upgrades in technology, the advancements, and the freedom pill, materials, etc., makes them even. Nine mil to 45, it makes them even. That's the argument. Well, it was always kind of stated, don't mess with 32 ACP. It's, it's not going to get it done for you. Well, will it? I don't know. So I brought some ballistics gel to see and to tell you non-believers. I think most of you out there from the state of Missouri, the old show me state. So that's what we're going to do here today. But first, we're going to take the Walther seven rounds of Hornady critical defense. If I can get it done before the rain, we're going to put it across the chronograph because it says 110 or I'm sorry, because it says a thousand feet per second for this Hornady critical defense here. We're gonna put it across chronograph and see. And then we are gonna put it in some ballistics gel, but we're gonna fire some 38 special out of a three inch revolver right behind this. Let's get to it. So I'm four yards away from the target to see what accuracy is like and the chronograph. Let's see if these 60 grain critical defense, first and foremost, I hope feeds in this thing. Let's see how accurate and what the speeds come out to be. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, it's a long way away from a thousand feet per second. Though not too bad in the accuracy department, it's about a hundred feet per second out of the three inch barrel of the Walther, less than what's printed on the box. Let's grab this old three inch Kimber and this 38 special critical defense, the same, and put it across the chronograph and see what it does. Range fans back at it with a Kimber K6S, but it ain't about this. It's about the cartridge. We got some critical duty 38 special, same stuff, just a different caliber as in the old Walther we just fired. We're gonna put it across the chronograph to see how it measures up against the speeds that we saw on the box, or that is on the box. I think it's 1,010 feet per second. This is 110 grain. The 32 ACP was 60 grain. Let's put it across the chronograph and get to the gel testing, big fella. Let's go. All right, folks, I'm trying to get this thing done before the rain comes in. Again, four yards down range. Let's cut that chit chatter. Let's see how accurate the Kimber is and what the speeds are. Double action. Same spot. Ooh, 935. Man, 38. This will be interesting. Looks like the speeds are about the same, so weight might make the difference. All right, that's five rounds down range at about the same speeds. Hey, come on over to dayattherange.com and I will show you the average, the standard deviation uh, and, and extreme spread and all that stuff between the two uh, rounds. But now let's get that gel set up. Hey, which one y'all want to see first? 38 special or the 32? Let's see what the 38 special does and save that old 32 for last. That way I keep you guys around and see if you're really interested in old Bond, James Bond. <laughs> old Rage fans, we are back out here with the Kimber K6S. I got one round. It is 110 grain, supposed to be 1,010 feet per second, but out of this three inch barrel, it's about 920 to 938 feet per second. But the critical defense ammo, the way that polymer tip is formed is supposed to be a beast on penetration. Well, we got 16 inches of clear ballistic gel. Is that enough to stop it? Let's see. Woo, right dead center. What did it do? Did it go all the way through? I don't think so, but let's check it out. Oh, let's see that 110 grain out of that three inch Kimber, guys. Gals, range, fans, look at that. Oh boy, it peeled back something fierce now. But it looks like it is only about eight inches of penetration. That's a 16 inch block and it's about halfway down. Listen, it's 110 grain. I think that's why most carry that venerable 125 grain and up. Well, let's see if Obond was as lethal as they made him out to be in the movies. Ha <laughs> ha, what we all came to see. Not a mark on this thing, this beautiful Walter PPK and 32 ACB. I'm gonna leave it to your imagination, but was Bond 007, was he as lethal as the film industry says he was with 32 ACP? And the Walther PPK, let's see. All right below it, strike, hit, clear. I'm almost afraid to go down range. That 38 only went eight inches. Let's go look at it, come on. I'm not sure, range fans. I'm not sure Bond was as lethal as they made him out to be. There you have the 38 special. 
It's about nine inches in a 16 inch block gel. That's 16 inches. And as you can see, it's about halfway. So it's between eight and nine. I forgot my tape measure. And then you have the 32 from the Walther three inch barrel. The 38's from a three inch barrel. It peels back pretty good. It even dumps its red dot a little bit ahead and you can see bounce back there. It peels back pretty good. I don't know. It retained its weight pretty good too. But I'm going to leave it to the old range fans. Was Bond as lethal as they made free? Oh, that didn't look too impressive. So we're going to see how hard it hits. Ooh, made a mess. Let's see how hard the 32 ACP hits. Oh, pretty gnarly, but it went all the way through, folks. There you have it. Listen, I don't know that I'd trust 32 ACP. I absolutely will trust uh, 38 Special. But I tell you, this is a fun one. Fun one. And it's just a classic. And I will tell you, the new models are absolute stunning. Walter, PPK, 32 ACP. There you have it.